And tonight on our Great Great American panel, he is the host of the John Phillips Show on Talk Radio 790, my radio affiliate in Los Angeles. John Phillips is here. She is a radio talk show host, former senior speechwriter for Senator Bill Frist, Republican strategist, now out of exile. Amy Holmes is with us. <laughs> and uh, he's an actor best known for his role in the series Hercules and currently stars in the newly released film What If, now available on DVD. Let's take a sneak peek. Seriously, Carl, why do you want to get married? Because we love each other? Well, my opinion, this isn't love. It's hormones. Carl, how much money do you make per month? Uh, what? And I'm guessing your after-tax income isn't much more than 3K, am I right? Um, it's, it's something like that. And once you bring your girl into the mix, the monthly nut doubles. I mean, that's not gonna kill you, but once she's got a bun in the oven and stops working, you gonna be ready for that? And even if we assume that you get your income up the typical 10% over the next couple of years, that's not going to be nearly enough to protect you from all the money arguments that cause over 50% of divorces. And then you two are going to be back in here saying, Pastor Ben, Pastor Ben, why didn't you stop us? Why don't you stage some sort of intervention? Actor Kevin Sorbo, I'm a big fan. Glad to see it. Thank you. Being it's with good us. to be here. You doing okay? By the way, he was wrestling with his daughter. So you no, just, my six-year-old son. He, uh, your he son got, did. He got the better part of me. Look at that. I look, I look, I look no, you don't nasty. look bad. It, it looks look, like a Terminator. No, thing. It does. <laughs> well, we're glad you came. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, glad you're okay. All right, look, you're Hollywood, Charlie Sheehan. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, th there's a part of me that kind of like, I guess maybe like everybody else, voyeuristic. You kind of like that. He's outspoken and saying it all, and everyone's yeah. freaking out about what he's saying. I kind of like that part, but here's the dangerous part. If he's blowing seven uh, or banging seven grams, uh, seven gram rocks, yeah. that's what I'm beginning to worry about the guy. I don't want to see, I don't Just want him. beginning to worry? <laughs> well, uh, all right, with all that has happened, mm -hmm. especially in recent months, you know, he seems out of control. Yeah. And, you know, reckless, and I don't want him to become a statistic. Neither do I. What, what, is, what is it about, why has this happened so often in Hollywood? I, you know, it, it's weird. It, it's, such a, it's such a strange reality in Hollywood. I mean, that's why you have the highest divorce rate probably of any profession that's out there. And, and I, I was on the show. I guest starred on the show a couple Did years you? ago. And he was a classy guy. I got to say, that I didn't find any tension on the set. I found everybody relaxed. Everybody's fun. He was great towards me. I've met him a few times in social situations prior to that, through, you know, in the 80s and even 90s. And yeah, he likes his nightlife. And I think just people, they, there's an indestructible thing that people have in the Hollywood, and there's an entitlement thing that goes on as well. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's sad. It's, it's sad to see what's going on with him because I think he's a very talented man. And You know, a friend but, of mine is a real good conservative. I won't mention his name. He's a well known writer. Knew him work with him said he was a real pro real professional yeah. look I'll never forget him in in Wall Street I mean he was phenomenal he was in platoon yeah, he was a, he's he was a great, great actor yeah. and is, is it that is is I've always said fame is unhealthy mm -hmm. you know because all right all human beings have an ego all human beings have a little selfish side we have that sure. little demon within us everyone's struggling between good and evil and it's like there's something about fame that seems extraordinarily unhealthy I think that's right, and actually Anthony Hopkins said very recently that human beings were just not built to withstand this kind of superstardom. And with Charlie Sheen, I don't know if what we're seeing is narcissism that bleeds into drug addiction. Uh, you know, I'm not a shrink. I'll play one on TV for, you, for your purposes. Um, but so I, you, you're, tired. you're not tired of pretending you're a bitch and rock star. <laughs> no. But I think here, I mean, how do you tell Charlie Sheen you're not the center of the universe? When in fact right now he is. You know, I've exchanged a few emails with him, and I tr as we went on, I found that I tried to get a little more, come on, Charlie, wake up, you're smarter than this. Mm -hmm. And that's when they stopped, interestingly. You know, and I just, mm -hmm. I'm sure there are people around him telling him the same thing. Obviously, I feel, I never liked his father's political views. I think his father's a great actor. Um, and I, obviously, his father and brother are trying to wake him up. It's not working. Well, you know, he says that he's off drugs now, Sean, but if you look at the interviews with him, he just looks horrible. He looks awful. He looks bad physically. He sounds bad. He's got the jazz hands, the jimmy legs. And I think that he might actually be off drugs, but he may have fried his brain. And it's just sad to see that happen. Is, because it, is, is it that, or do most people that are on drugs, uh, my friend Bob Beckles, uh, a former addict, he spends all his free time helping people that, that struggle with addictions. Is it that when you get off drugs, whatever the underlying problems are, 
that cause you to use them begin to manifest. Is, that, is it more? Well, I, I think you do chemical damage to your brain, too, because he's making up his own language. I mean, it's no. like Dr. Seuss, if Dr. Seuss were on crack. I mean, the words Winning. that he's using. Well, I, right. I, no, I, I, yeah. think, I think the last the last We're all psychoanalyzing him. And by the way, he'd be no, laughing but, at but, that. But, but, <laughs> but, but the last 20-some years of him doing these drugs has certainly it's, it's taken its toll on him. I, mean, I watch the show. I like to an F man. I laugh at it. And I, you look at the season, he doesn't look healthy to me. He, no. he this looks, season. This season. He's, he's, there's a change in him. There's a gauntness to him. And it's there's just, another question. Know, caught up to him, I think. Uh, and actually, one of the New York tabloids had the story today about one, the, the porn star, I guess, that had the problem with him in New York at the hotel when he had... in the bathroom, naked, right? That right, one. that one. Um, uh, As you would do. I was gonna... Well, apparently, <laughs> she's saying, listen, I, I don't think people in my profession, porn stars, ought to be hanging around kids. Wow. Uh, you know, i got to hand it to her. To pretty young girl. You. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing here with this situation. And, you know, Bill Maher, he just said, uh, I think it was on the uh, Tonight Show, that, you yeah, know. Yeah, I really love quoting Bill Maher. <laughs> He's the great <laughs> of our time. If he wants to do drugs, if he doesn't hurt anybody, that's his business. But he is hurting people. And he has four very young children. He He's got has, five kids all together. He has five all together, oh. adult daughter, but four young children. And, I mean, you couldn't help but cringe when you saw the video of him holding his baby and talking about with his goddesses that we're one big family. Watching that, I thought, I hope Child Protective Services is watching this, oh, too. Oh, they came yeah. and took the kids. They did take the kids. Was that the right decision? Oh, absolutely. If you're raising your kids in what's essentially a some sort of porn star compound, um, you know, could you think of any more unhealthy of an environment to raise a child in? I mean, when I got married, I got rid of my porn star compound. <laughs> <laughs> yes, did done. you have one? I'm done. Well, <laughs> What about the deep? I'm an actor. What do you By think, the way, the same thing doesn't happen to talk shows. Maybe O'Reilly, I don't know, but it doesn't happen to Hannity. So, uh, so uh, all right, we got to take a break. We'll come back. We have a lot more with our great, great, great American panel coming up right after this. And we continue now with our great American panel. All right, so Eric Holder was criticized this week, the attorney general. He uses the comment, my people, uh, when talking about the Black Panther case. Now this calls for him to resign. Um... What does that mean, my people? I thought we were all the American people. I thought we were all God's children in that sense. Does that comment offend you at all? Um, yeah, it does a little bit. I, th I think that uh, the racism issue is perpetuated a lot by the people who scream racism all the time. Yeah. And I think there has to be an end to it someplace, somewhere, somehow. I mean, I, I have found people like uh, Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, guys, that you know, if, if they lose, if, if they actually got what they say they believe in, came to fruition, they'd be out of a job. Why are there so... I mean, you're... A Pretty big star in Hollywood. Why are there so few conservatives out in Hollywood? Uh, I think people are afraid. I, you know, it, it seems like it's a club in Hollywood. It seems like it's a club to say that you're a, a, a liberal, and if you if you don't be part of that club, then people will frown on you. I mean, Hollywood screams for freedom of speech, but they will not let you if you don't agree with what they say. They have a problem with that, mm -hmm. and it's a problem. What do you think about Holder? Uh, I think it was totally inappropriate for him to be saying this, particularly in his capacity as Attorney General, that mm -hmm. equality before the law is a bedrock principle of, uh, you know, the American system. I and mean, we hold these truths to be self-evident. But when you ask about, you know, my people, privately, if Eric Holder feels a certain racial solidarity, I have no problem with that. Mm -hmm. And I understand it completely. And you see other ethnic groups. I work with two Irish Catholic guys that talk about, you know, being Irish Catholic all the time. Uh, so I think on that personal level, it, I, I don't have a problem You're with that. Probably but, uh, related to him. Yeah, probably, right. <laughs> but uh, as Attorney General, uh, it's totally, thoroughly inappropriate. You know, uh, there's been issues that have come up. There's this new, did you heard about this new book that came out in, in U.S. News, the writer? And he talks about an incident where Barack Obama, back in May, I think it was 2009 or 10, you know, was describing the Tea Party and that there was a racial element to the Tea Party. And we've learned there's no evidence whatsoever of that. And I'm, I'm putting that together, black liberation theology and uh, Michelle Obama, America's a downright mean country in 2008. I, I, I don't know... I don't know what the president's motivation is. Does he really believe that America thinks this way? Because... America, I don't think, was looking at color in 2008. I think they were looking at who they thought was going to best lead the country. I tried to point out that he was not the right person. I was not successful, but I don't think people were looking at race. You know, at some mansion somewhere in Texas right now, Ross Perot saying to himself, see, I was right, he was listening to me, you people. 
Um, as much as Eric Holder sounds like he's just out on the moon or insane, is what he's doing is he is out there and he's the face of the Obama agenda. He's not saying anything that President Obama doesn't believe in, that the administration doesn't believe in. He's just the guy who's the punching bag. He is what Hillary Clinton was to the Bill Clinton administration. Yeah, but let's get back to what Obama said. And uh, to me, when I saw that, I was so disappointed that one of the things that we were so hopeful was that Obama could move us forward, President Obama, I should say, and for him you can to call him the anointed <laughs> for him to be you know casting aspersions on the tea party which by the way in exit polling uh, we found that voters 40% of voters were sympathetic and believed in the tea party's uh, you know agenda but for Barack, Barack Obama not to recognize he won 53% of the vote which is more than George Bush did, who's white, more than Al Gore did in 2000, who's white, more than Bill Clinton did, who's white. And that says something about the American people and about our character that I was so proud of on Election Day, even if I didn't necessarily agree with the president's policies. Yeah, what do you think? You know, well, I've seen a couple of different polls that came out after uh, the president was elected, and it was like 95 to 97 percent, I believe, of the black population voted for him. Mm -hmm. To me, I would call it sort of a racist vote, in a way. If you had that the other way around, well, people, no, people that, would have that, screamed racism. Don't that, you think people would have screamed racism on that? 90 to 95 percent of the black population votes Democrat. They just pulled the Democratic that, lever, that, so I, I, he had a okay. D behind his name I, as I well. Guess, I guess you can say it. But I mean, I've worked with a lot of people in Hollywood. Do, do, do you th well, let me, let me reverse his, yeah. his point. If, say, 90 percent of the, the white population voted for a white candidate, would people then examine... Is, is white America racist? That did not happen in, in 2008. And by the way, I, I think it's good for race relations, but um, I just want the best person. What was the, the percentage of white people that voted for Obama? Probably pretty high. It was the majority. Yeah, yeah very high. Yeah. So, and, and, and as I say, it's disappointing that uh, President Obama would not recognize that it's so important to the American people that he move us forward and not, you know, enmesh us in these issues. All right, last question. In that who, way. I'll ask very quickly, who would be the best Republican to run against President Obama? Pawlenty. Chris Christie, but he won't. Chris Christie. All right, forget it. He's not running. <laughs> Next guess. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll decide I think, closer to 2012. That is such a cop out. <laughs> Come on, give me somebody. Gosh, well, we haven't even had the primary. We haven't even seen the debates. Best off the top of weaknesses. your head. Strengths and weaknesses. Um, ooh, it, I don't know. There's not a front runner for me yet. Claire Palin. Sarah Palin. I'd go for Sarah Palin. All right. That's all the time we have left, guys. Thanks for being with us. Hope your eyes better. Me too.